Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Prince Ogbonna, and I will be presenting on oil pipeline breaks in Nigerian um, DRL approach. Okay, uh, a synopsis to the presentation uh, is the effect of oil pipelines and how the Nigerian government intervened using a structured approach. Okay, so. The volume. Let the volume come up. More volume. Framework for Action 2005 to 2015 on Disaster Reduction was adopted, and the World Conference on Disaster Reduction held in January 2005 in Hugo, Japan. The conference provided a unique opportunity to promote a strategic and systematic approach to reducing vulnerabilities and risk to hazards. Five areas of challenge were identified as gaps that must be bridged to aid the implementation of the action plan governance, risk identification assessment, monitoring, and early warning knowledge management and education, reducing underlying risk factors, preparedness for effective response and recovery. The evolution of disaster management thinking initiated the implementation of preventive strategies which has birthed the concept of disaster risk reduction. Disaster risk reduction can be defined as a systematic approach to identifying, assessing and reducing the risk of disaster. Over the years, Africa has been considered a continent that is highly exposed to risk and disaster. Incidentally, many of these disasters are human-made, mostly caused by misuse, ignorance, and poverty. For instance, Nigeria is assumed to be the giant of Africa, with a population of about 170 million people. Known as Africa's leading oil producer and the world's seventh largest exporter of crude oil, the Nigerian economy has over the years been dependent on the revenues from the petroleum sector. The discovery of crude oil in commercial quantity in Oloibari in 1956 have marked the birth of the petroleum industry. Since then, over 5,284 oil wells have sprung up, producing from about 160 oil fields. There are about 7,000 kilometers of pipelines and flow lines over a land area of 31,000 square kilometers. 275 flow stations operated by 13 oil companies in the Niger Delta. The Nigerian petroleum industry have been confronted by two sapping challenges over the years. The challenges that relate to the prevalence of militancy and oil pipeline vandalism. Oil pipeline vandalism implies the deliberate action of breaking oil pipelines with the intent to steal petroleum products or to sabotage the government. A total of 16,083 pipeline breaks were recorded within the last 10 years, while 398 pipeline breaks representing 2.4% were due to ruptures. The activities of vandals accounted for 15,685 breaks, which translate to about 97.5% of the total number of cases. The causes of such level of unpatriotic and criminal exercises has been irrational. However, Prominent among these factors are the widespread of poverty and ignorance among Nigerians, scarcity of petroleum products which has flourished and expanded the oil black markets in Nigeria. The consequences of this vandalism are sometimes not thought through. Oil pipeline breaks result to explosion, fire, death, loss of properties and environmental degradation. Let's examine some of these losses and after effects. Firstly, economic loss. A report issued by Naiti in July 2013 indicated that Nigeria lost a whopping sum of 10.9 billion US dollars to oil theft and vandalism in the period of 2009 to 2011 alone. This translates to huge economic loss with far-reaching implications for Nigeria's economic growth and development. Secondly, environmental degradation. Pipeline vandalism has caused incidences of oil spillage in Nigeria. 
This is typical in the Niger Delta region of Nigeria where farmlands, aquatic and wildlife have been destroyed. Also, the water and air pollution have implications to the public health and safety of the people. Trillium products are made up of hydrocarbons and we know hydrocarbons as, you know, uh, chemical products which affect cells, which affect uh, tissues and, it, I mean, it's established that petroleum products contain these hydrocarbons which are injurious to human cells and human tissues and therefore that's why it's always recommended that people should keep away from um, uh, areas in which there is, you know, large hydrocarbon vapor in the air or hydrocarbon liquid on the ground and uh, hydrocarbon uh, liquid anywhere you find it is better that humans keep away because of its toxicity to the cells as well as the tissues of humans. Pipeline spill, which uh, the, the, from which the Jogun village was affected. The, as the spill occurred, the fauna and flora in those areas got, got badly damaged. And the net effect is that we saw pictures of a large fish kill uh, lying around. And it's inevitable. Wherever there is uh, an hydrocarbon spill, particularly in water containing fishes. So what we saw in the Jogu is probably that the spill occurred in the uh, pipeline, in the swamp, and it was washed into the lagoon. As it landed in the lagoon, the high hydrocarbon level in the lagoon caused a lot of fish kill, which was the pictures we were seeing. And that's because hydrocarbon, as we, say, as we know it, uh, is injurious even to fish life. Totally fire disaster pipeline explosion. This has been the worst manifestation of the impact of oil pipeline vandalism on human security in Nigeria. Tens of thousands of lives have been lost to explosion from vandalized pipelines in the last 15 years. Sometimes the exact figures of the casualties weren't ascertained in these events of fire outbreak. This loss described briefly the significance of vandalism as a veritable problem in the Nigerian economy and the Nigerian nation at large. The federal government of Nigeria in 2008 rose to the occasion under the National Emergency Management Agency, NEMA, funded by the Ecological Fund Office of the Presidency. It mandated a research team to conduct a baseline assessment study on the situation. The team swung into action and embarked on a tour to some pilot states. Kaduna State was one of the states selected for this pilot assessment. Over the years, Kaduna State had played a central role in the network of crude and product pipelines in the country. The recent activities of vandalism along the Kaduna Gombe pipeline route had raised the concerns of stakeholders, underscoring the fact that human residence begins with enabling every stakeholder to express their concern, to be heard and to be active agents in reshaping their destinies. The team ensured to bring relevant active players within the region to a roundtable discussion. Looking at the northern part of Nigeria, one would expect that there's no much oil spillage. But truly, uh, what's happening is beyond imagination. Especially when you look at um, Abaji Axis, because we have so many vendors, they vandalize the pipelines, leave the pipelines open. Put oil spilling into the environment, contaminating the farmlands and the environment. So there's a growing uh, concern about the issue of the pipeline vandalization and uh, oil pollution in the northern part of this country. Real issues and challenges posed by the activities of these vendors were elaborated. The state stakeholders' consultative meeting provided strategic nomination of local communities that can be visited for the assessment. The first field visit by the team was the community close to the Kaduna refinery. The team was alerted of an oil spill that had been a concern to the local community. A visit revealed a four-year crude oil spill unattended to. The concern of the team was alerted as they got feedback from local residents. Apparently, the local community was struggling to recover her land from degradation. A recommendation for a bold and urgent action on recovery for the community was duly noted. To study the vulnerability of some of the communities living around these pipelines, the team carried out a qualitative interview with individuals in the community on their experience with pipeline breaks. They know about the pipeline. About the pipeline. Our problem is we need a borehole and a light 
and uh, uh, sometimes some diseases are affecting us. With the understanding that human residence at local level is ensuring that people's knowledge and choices are rich, presently and in the future, the team headed for the closest community school to find out their knowledge about the right of way of oil pipelines. Apparently, they were less informed. They are uh, that's why I say sometimes they are professionals. That is the danger involved. That's why you need to use yeah. them on awareness that they will know that they are yeah, experts. Are because that is how normally fire starts. Start. Yeah. The first exposure of the mm. information, mm. you can still see evidence that they dug it. You can see the pipe 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 breaks that happen. Or maybe the dog places that are not uh, uh, a lot of um, experience of this pipeline. <laughs> When after you are removing the all the tight clothing yes. and keeping the pest before I transport, if the condition is uh, beyond our facility, we are we are quickly transfer him. To the nearest health facility above where. So the team paid a visit to the district head. To our amazement, the people living in the community had no clue about the dangers of the oil pipeline and no knowledge about the right of way. Apparently, they were not aware of the risk associated with living by the pipeline. The need for an advocacy and awareness plan at the local level of this community was also duly noted. At the end of the visit, the recommendations made by stakeholders were highlighted and reviewed accordingly. The findings by the team was also communicated appropriately and a national consultative meeting with all relevant stakeholders including the Nigerian Police Force, NSCDC, NEMA, NOSRA, Fire Service, Ministries and Parastatas heads were convened soon after. The meeting brought for the first time an active platform for future collaboration between active players in the pipeline risk reduction community. A new vista for an active engagement of all stakeholders in fighting the minas of oil breaks in Nigeria was born. This structural intervention brought a relief to the oil pipeline communities as a decline in the activities of the vandals around this region was noted. Interestingly, this DR approach has reinforced the belief that we are not dwelling in the pains of the past or the fears in our today, but we are shaping the future through a constructive, developmental and progressive effort. As a nation, we've realized the need to consider vulnerability and resilience through a more objective lens. By being resilient, we are paying attention to the risk of future deterioration in individuals, communities, states and the nation. This story is shared to stimulate the implementation of disaster risk reduction strategies in all other strata of nation building. It's a call for a sustainable national commitment which identifies risk and builds resilience across board. And that call begins with you. Prevent, prepare, build residence, act collectively, act now. All right, thank you very much. If you have questions in relation to this, um, I appreciate your questions, remarks. Okay, the story was told properly. Thank you so much. Thank you.